guys, for today's video, we're going to be using code to create interactive art. There's a website called Scratch, and it's basically an interactive way to code. Everything is with blocks and drag and drop, and there's a visual output. So a lot of people make art on there. They make video games. They make like interactive art where you can like click on different things. You can make YouTube intros. And I think you guys are going to really like this. I'm going to give you a link to the projects where you can look at the code and edit the code and personalize it for yourself. And yeah, that's that's what we're doing today. So let's get started on the first app. All right, so this is what the Scratch website looks like. We're going to click Create to create a new project. And this is the blank project space. We have a code tab, a costumes tab, and a sounds tab. The first thing I'm going to do is actually just name the project. I'll be changing it from Untitled to Autumn Leaves Game. So for this game, we're going to have falling autumn leaves and we're going to collect them by clicking on them. So you just saw me delete the two scratch cats just because I didn't want those. I'm going to be using a leaf. Uh, so right there, that button, you can click and you can upload a sprite that's predetermined or you can upload your own image, which is what I have chosen to do. I uploaded a leaf that I downloaded from the internet. So the first thing I want to do for our game is make the leaf clickable. And I want to track how many times I click the leaf. To do that, we have to create a variable called score. And score will keep track of how many times I have clicked the leaf. So when the sprite is clicked, we change the score by one, the sprite being the leaf. When I click the leaf, the score increases. In the world of Scratch, that flag, that green flag, starts the game. So when the green flag is clicked, we want to set the variable score to zero. Because when you start a game, you usually start with zero as your score. So now every time I hit the flag, it will go back to zero. The next thing that I want to do is make the leaf move around. So there's a button called go to a random position and there's a glide button. So that will make the leaf glide around. And I want to make the leaf glide infinitely. I don't want it to just glide once. I want it to glide on repeat, which is why it says forever. It's just going to glide around forever. Next, I'm going to make the leaf smaller by going to the costumes tab and just reducing the size. And now when I hit start, I can see my leaf is moving around randomly forever. The next thing I want to do is say, if my leaf is clicked, I collect it. It disappears. So that's hide. That's that purple hide. The next thing that I'm doing right there is I'm creating another leaf, a clone of the leaf, if the leaf is clicked. I want that clone to act exactly the same as the original. So that's why I copied the code right there. I duplicated it. So now every time I click that leaf, another appears, you can see. You click, it disappears, another one appears. You click, it disappears, another one appears. Okay, so the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna create more than one leaf. You wanna create multiple leaves. So I'm creating a random number between one and three leaves at a time. So now if I click on a leaf, I collect it and either one, two, or three appears randomly. This can get to be a little bit too much leaves, so we're going to have to stop it and make a maximum. So we're saying number of clones, and we're just going to track how many clones we're actually making of the leaves and make sure that we don't make too many. So that's what that whole block right there is saying. It's saying if there's more than 10 leaves on the screen at a time, don't make any more leaves. So that's what happened here. We're limiting the number of leaves, so it can be a little more relaxing. We don't want too many leaves on the screen at once, you know? And the last thing I want to do to make this game really relaxing is I want to add, well, a background first. So I got this image from the internet. It's a just a background. You can upload it, move it around. And the next thing that I want to do is every time a leaf is clicked, I want a sound to be made. So you can record sounds in Scratch and clip them right there play them and you can add it to the process so when the leaf is clicked it makes that noise yeah and the fun part about scratch is that so this is what it looks like right now 
but I can just change all these sprites and make this look like a completely different game, even though it has the same exact code. So I changed the background to an underwater theme, and I also changed the leaf to be bubbles, so you're popping bubbles, and I added my character Seaford in. The last thing I'm going to show you for this app is how I made Seaford look like he was waving. So they have these things called costumes, and I added all different images of Seaford with his hand in different positions. And... When Seaford is clicked, he's going to say something now. So I can click on Seaford and he says, hello. I can make him say anything. I can make him say, hey, I'm Seaford. Uh, did you see my merch yet? Oh my god, he's usually not like this, I swear. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah. So we have Seaford merch. It's now available. We have t-shirts, hoodies, and crewnecks. I have them in all different colors, all different sizes. So this is what the hoodie looks like. This is the pink one. There's all different colors as well. I am obsessed with the hoodie. It's so soft on the inside. I've been wearing it constantly. And the best part of the hoodie is the back. We have Seaford and his little shell on the back. I think it's like so funny. The other thing that I also have is stickers. So I have a Seaford sticker. He's super cute. He's about, I don't know how many inches this is, like two or three, two inches, three inches. It's perfect for a notebook a laptop. That's where I'm gonna put mine. You, you could even fit it on a phone case. It's small enough, but large enough, you know? Uh, so I am choosing to put mine on my laptop. Okay, so we have the sticker. I'm going to put the sticker, I think I'm going to put Seaford right here. You'll notice that I have my signature on Seaford. So this is my Bellamina with a star signature, and I also decided to make the B as a little heart because I thought that looked really cute. I'm obsessed with the sticker. I think I want to get one and put it on my phone case probably. I just think it looks so cute. So yeah, what I'm saying is the merch is out now. If you would like to purchase it, I have a link in my description and probably pinned to the top of this video. You can click that. You can view, browse around on all of the merch. It's going to be super fun. We can all have matching things. Um, all right, let's finish the Seaford app. Okay, finishing up this app. So we're going to have a random number between one and two. So you can pick one and you'll say, hey, I'm Seaford. If you pick two, it'll say, have you seen my merch yet? And then the next thing we're going to do is change Seaford's costume. So like I said before, I had all these different images of Seaford with his hand in different positions. And I just changed his costume. Basically, by switching between images of Seaford with his hand in different positions, it looks like he's waving. I find popping these bubbles really relaxing, especially with the noise it makes. I have a link down below that you guys can play this game yourself on your phone or on your computer. And I also have a link where you can look at the project and you can edit it yourself. You can change the bubbles to something else. Maybe you'll change it to falling pumpkins or something. You can make your own game. Okay, next up, we're starting with a completely new project. For this one, I wanted to make an intro for a YouTube channel. The basic concept is to just have your name and have the letters move around, like animate the letters. So I'm just clicking the scratch letters, putting it to the size that I want it, and spelling out Bellamina. And then when that flag is clicked, I want something to happen forever. I want the letters to move, to animate, so I can have them rotate, I can have them change size. I can really have them do anything that you want it to do. For me, I decided to have the letters change size by a little bit. So you can see the B is moving. I just copied that same code into every single letter and now they're all moving. Do you see how they're like changing size? I thought that would be a fun intro for a YouTube video. Um, and then I also went with the predetermined city background, the colorful city from scratch and I move the letters down to the bottom. And the other thing that I wanted to do was change the color of the letters. And I realized that this might be a little bit confusing, but again, I have the project links down below. So you can just click on that and use my project and then change the letters around. And then you can have your name in it, you know? We're moving on to the next one. For this one, I'm also making a YouTube intro. I'm gonna be animating something. I went with this hippo to begin with. It was like a thing that was in Scratch. I really hate that hippo. I think it looks horrible. It's so scary. Get away from I'm me. I'm so scared. But basically the idea for this is you just move between images. So you can see I've selected the bear. This comes in Scratch as a preset and there's eight different images for this bear. And you just rotate between images. You change the costume is what they call it. 
and it looks like it's walking. So yeah, changing costume means it'll change the image. The next thing I want is the bear to glide across the screen. So you just use the glide button and it makes it look like it's actually moving. And I want it to reappear on the left side, like in a continuous loop, in a forever loop. It'll just keep walking across the screen and reappearing at the beginning. The next thing I'm doing is adding a background. There are a bunch of backgrounds that come with Scratch. I chose this one because I thought it looked good with the bear. I wanted the bear to do something when you clicked on it. So I'm adding the bear to have two more costumes. And then I'm adding that block that says when the sprite is clicked, change costume. So now when I click on the bear, you see how it looks at you? And that's all you really have to do. They also have other fun things in Scratch where you can like draw, you can write your name and change between those. So that's what I'm doing here. I wrote my name three different times and I just went in a forever loop changing the costume and waiting in between and then it looks like this. And I thought that would be a cool YouTube intro too. Ultimately, I decided to go with just some text and I did three different versions of the text and then when you hit play, it changes between the text. And really all this is is just changing costume and changing text. I also have the project linked down below, so if you want to change Bellamina to whatever your name is or change the bear to some other animal, you can totally do that. And we have today's shout outs. We have Cherry Blossom, Start Game YouTube, who has been super nice. They made a video for me asking people to subscribe and everything. Super nice. Um, we have Bubbly Shark 24, Rose, Shira, Bryn, Haley, MXM Videos, Irene, and Miriam the foodie. And we have a lot of people that are repeating on the shout out list. I just want to say thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. You're so nice to me and you're so supportive. And this is your shout out. Hi. I'm thinking of turning this video into a series, but I'm not sure. So let me know if you guys liked this. Do you want to see me use code to make more interactive art? Are there different things that you want to see? Do you want to see more games? Do you want to see more types of YouTube intros that you can use? And don't forget to check out the links down below. We have the link to the merch, of course, which I know you guys want to see. And then we also have the other links to the apps that I made that you can like play them on your phone. Or we also have the links to the projects where you can see inside and look at the code and personalize it. And that's really all I have, guys. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to, otherwise don't. And I will see you guys next week for another video. Bye.